And we're grateful to be here this morning. We might continue in our study of your word. It might help to build us up, help to encourage us to do your will, to glorify you in all that we do. We're grateful for every person who is here. We pray for those who are unable to be here because they are sick or traveling. You'd watch over them, bring them back to us safely, helping us always to uh, use what you've given us wisely in a way that honors you. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, so we started a couple of weeks ago um, talking about the, well, the last three weeks we've been talking about the church and the one body and the fact the Bible uses the description of us as being a body or even being a building. We're being built into a building. We're part of a body and we recognize our bodies have got different parts. They don't, don't all do the same thing, but they work together. And the church is described that way. And so today we're going to kind of take a look at this in a little bit more detail and talk more specifically kind of about some of the, well, how do we function in the body, right? So I got a couple of scriptures here, just kind of a quick review of some of the key things we looked at um, last time. Um, and I don't know if many of you noticed that uh, two weeks ago when we last had class that Tommy used almost all the same scriptures as lessons. You noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. You heard this before. It's familiar, right? Yeah, it was kind of cool. So this will be somewhat re um, a quick review, but just a reminder. So in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, we see Peter using this kind of imagery. He says, as you come to him, the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So it talks about us being that a spiritual body, not a physical body or building, but a spiritual one. And we're offering sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ. What kind of sacrifices do we offer? We don't go and do animal sacrifices. So what are our sacrifices? For a lot of people, it's giving up Sunday football. Okay, okay. For some, it's giving up Sunday football, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for a lot of people, it is. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, when you, when you think about a sacrifice in and of itself, it means to give up something, right? It, it costs you something right? And it costs us our time or it costs our money or it costs us resources or whatever. Um, but we're offering these to God, right? So, and it can come a lot of different forms, you know, coming to church and studying or worshiping or giving money or doing whatever we do, right? Can be a worship. But that's the concept of the Bible is that church isn't meant to be for us just a place to go and sit. We're, we're part of a body. We're doing something. We're worshiping God, Okay. So that's one, we see it there. And then in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 21, we see something um, a little bit more about this as well. Paul writing here to the Ephesian church and talking basically about the Jews and Gentiles are all being brought together into one body. <clears throat> he says, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, another description, God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. We talked about that foundation laid with Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So very similar to Purity's wording, right? It's a spiritual building. We're being built into this spiritual house together uh, with Christ. So kind of a cool imagery. Okay, and then in Romans, Romans chapter 12, Paul writes this about it as well. So we've talked about a building, but he also used the idea of a body where he says, uh, verse 4 and 5, Romans 12, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Right? Kind of like a tree, yeah, yeah. We belong to each other, right? That we're, we're not independent of one another and uh, we're, we function together as a body for Christ, okay? So he uses that kind of imagery, yeah, okay? And we don't all have the same function. I mean, roots don't do the same thing as leaves on a tree or branches or whatever, right? But you need all those parts in order for it to work, right? And that's the way it is in the church, same way. And in Paul in 1 Corinthians, uh, we'll come back to Romans later, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we look at these verses as well. Paul here talking about the, again, the same concept about a body being part, 
uh, having many members like we have eyes and ears and nose and mouth and hands. And just because they're not an ear doesn't mean the hand's not valuable. Same thing with a foot or whatever. We all belong to each other. And he, in concluding this in verse 27 through 28 and following, <clears throat> and in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, uh, with those with gifts of administration, and these, those speaking in different kinds of tongue. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are they all teachers? Do they all work miracles? Do they all have the gift of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But eagerly desire the greater gifts. So not everybody's got the same gift, but they all function together. God's set it up the way he wants it to work, right? Each have a part in it, okay? Um, what I had asked some of the people in this class to do prior to coming to class today was for them to kind of share with the class what part of the body do you see yourself in and how did you come to be in that position here at Puyallup? So, I don't know, Chris or Bob, if either one of you want to share kind of your story. Well, where, where to begin exactly? Um, I, I've kind of done a little bit of, of everything. Uh, I had only been a Christian maybe six months, if that long, when I came down on orders to go to Europe. And uh, the congregation in Germany was extremely small, so uh, I kind of got thrown into leading singing and uh, so uh, there was some controversy about several items like eating in the building and support of widows and orphans and support of uh, uh, missionary societies and the like. So each of the men were assigned a subject to present a lesson on. Well, not having the first idea of what, what to do or how to work it, uh, I managed to get through that. My particular, uh, I had uh, drawn missionary societies and uh, I started out that by, by definition, Webster's Dictionary, the church, by definition, is a missionary society because we're supposed to go out and bring mm -hmm. people into the church. So that's, that's mm -hmm. the mission. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've taught uh, fifth and sixth graders. I've taught teenagers. So I've been in the teaching business. Um, I have served this congregation as a deacon uh, overseeing a medical benevolence account which has been absorbed into the regular benevolence combined uh, which Bill Staggs now has control over. Uh, currently I'm, I'm serving as an elder. Um, uh, been doing that since about 2005. Um, I've often said that had I known what the job was really about, I may have declined <laughs> the work. But uh, you just, it, it overwhelms my heart with the generosity of this congregation. If you, have, if you tell them you have a need, then you're going to get more than what you need. The people just contribute like crazy. And... Uh, especially during the tough times, it's, it just warms my heart. It's, it's been interesting, challenging, and joyful all at the same time. And uh, having, having served in the different capacities uh, helps appreciate the preparation that the teachers have to do to present the class. And uh, as, a, as, a, as a deacon and as an elder and, and, and getting calls at, at night, kind of 
kind of appreciate the role the preacher has because generally that's the first person people go to is they call the preacher first and uh, getting those late calls and stuff. So I appreciate the sacrifice that they have to do. If, if somebody would have told me back in my <clears throat> younger days that uh, I would be serving this capacity, I said, yeah, right. Uh, I was, uh, I had a tremendous problem with alcohol and uh, I like, I like to party and I like going out and, and doing things and uh, I would never have, I have dreamed. There are several, several instances where uh, I probably should have been dead, uh, but I remain alive. And I can only, uh, only say that uh, God had a purpose for me, and he saw me through those times to bring me here. You just can't. You know, reflecting back on the things that should have been and weren't had to have been the hand of God for delivering me for, for what I'm doing now. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're kind of, a, with the scripture, talk about God has appointed people to be in their different positions, and you're always the one that when we meet with new people and say, God's put you here at this time, this place for a reason. Might not know what it is, but... I'm yeah. on purpose, and yeah. uh, your reason for being here is uh, one of two things: you to learn from us, or us to learn from you, or both. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, learn together. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, no, I appreciate Chris being here, but yeah, he's had quite the quite the journey getting here. And like you say, you starting out, I never would have thought this way you'd end up. But, but I think that's the way it is with God, and I think that's part of we want to look at this this lesson today and next week is just how God works through our lives to accomplish his purpose. It's really pretty cool. Um, I like what you had to say there about, you know, um, congregation sharing. I mean, that's the body at work. We care about each other. Each member cares about one another. Um, and that's the way it's supposed to be. So it doesn't, doesn't always occur, but that's where it is. So, yeah. I, I don't know, short term, I feel like I'm here for comedic effect. Uh, the long term <laughs> would be, uh, of course, I, I, for me, I feel like uh, my roots are still sprouting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm trying to gain as much knowledge as I can. Yep. Um, so maybe not right now as far as uh, spiritually I have a lot to offer, but I feel like someday, um, especially with your help and others, that you know, I'll shoot up and be able to you know, affect others. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, all of us that have grown up in Christ, you know, that way we start off, we don't hardly know anything, don't know how to do anything. But as this lesson is going to point out, and you see in our own lives, that that's what we do. We start off just wanting to grow and learn and do different things. You never know where you're getting that. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. But, yeah, grateful to have you here. Yeah. So, no. Bob, if you want to share your story, maybe. I was a student at the University of Washington and living in the dorm, and my roommate was a member of this congregation. Uh, and his father was an elder here. And um, he was pretty sure I was a freak, and he was probably right. But he <laughs> persisted uh, in talking to me. Uh, and after some period of time, he started working with the church in Renton because his father had temporarily preached there, but he needed to come back to Puyallup. So we would, he would go down there every weekend, and he invited me to go with him. He said, it's a free lunch, you know, so I would go with him. And um, the people were so nice. Uh, they were so generous and so gracious. It was about 50 people, and uh, I really enjoyed them. And he preached, um, you know, the basic gospel. And I had a suspicion that I was the only one there that, that needed to obey the gospel. Everyone else already had. So I supposed he was talking to me, but I wasn't offended because he was very nice about it. Uh, and he was very kind in general, and I had no training in the Bible. So... Um, gradually, he um, would become more specific, and one day his parents, who were here, 
uh, invited us to lunch after worship. And as we were driving down from Renton, he asked me if I understood the lesson that he taught. And I said, yes, I did. And he said, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? And I said, yes, I do. And he said, do you believe that you need to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins? And I said, yes, I do. And he said, um, why didn't you ask me? And I said, well, I was just waiting to see what else you wanted to say. <laughs> Maybe I was missing something. And so I was baptized right over there in 1972. Uh, and from there, you know, I went back and uh, I had no training in any kind of church stuff. Uh, not the Bible or anything. So I didn't have any courage to be a teacher. Um, but they encouraged me to go to school. And so I went to Bear Valley in Denver, and there I studied the Bible, and then I went to Sunset, studied missions. Um, they, had a, they had courses on uh, being a missionary in America. And so I thought, okay, I'm interested in that. And they, they were very helpful, but obviously you learned about being missionary anywhere. Uh, and so the congregation um, here wasn't sure, some of the leaders, whether um, they wanted me to come back and work with him, so I interviewed and applied for a job in Brazil. And I was on the second level of interviews from people who came up from Brazil to go there. When some of the men uh, got together and one of them called me and said, we want you to come and work with us. And then I was in the dilemma, you know, they were like, they were my home congregation. This is my spiritual family. I just had to say yes. So I said, okay, never mind, not foreign missions right now. And so I was at Springbrook maybe for 15 years or 16 years, and the opportunity to do mission work came up. And they sent me to Slovakia when the Iron Curtain came down and the, the way it was open to preach the gospel. Uh, and um, I went, and they, uh, one of the preachers in the area was organizing people to go, and it was through Sunset. And he asked me if I would go for three months. It was a three-month thing. And it, they were, it was costing about $8,000 because they had to set up everything, plus transportation and living and all that. And I said, there's no way this congregation is going to give me $8,000. They just built a new building, and we've only been here a short time. And he said, that's not your choice, Bob. He said, you present it to the church, and you let them decide. So I presented it Sunday morning because I was preaching. And by Sunday night, the treasurer said, well, we got $10,000, you're going. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and so I went, and I enjoyed working there. Uh, and I was asked if I wanted to come back, and I said, sure, I'd like to. Uh, and ended up staying for 22 years. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I went from knowing nothing about the Bible, not any experience as a Christian, um, to training in the Bible, uh, working for 16 years, getting very helpful, practical experience, and then working in a mission field for 22 years. None of which, if you ask anybody in high school, did you know that Bob Stump's a missionary? They, they would have probably fallen down and fainted. <laughs> because there, uh, there was nothing about me that would have suggested that from my point of view. Anyway, so I, I feel like the same as you said, uh, it wasn't a coincidence that I got assigned to a particular person in the dormitory. Uh, it, it just it was God's working, and it wasn't a coincidence that I got a small congregation where the people were very friendly. It wasn't a coincidence that everything I learned at Springbrook was useful in a foreign country. Uh, it just, and then I came here um, because it got to the point where we trained leaders. We had people who finished uh, Bible school, and if I stayed, I would be doing their work. And so I decided, no, I'm not going to stay. They are trained, and they can do this work. And I decided to come back, and uh, Ben Wilson invited me to come here because at that time, Sunset had uh, remote campuses where you'd come and join up with a live class. And then, of course, uh, with COVID, everything went online. Even all the students in Lubbock went online. So they don't do that anymore. For example, Christian is taking the course as Christian Charpentier but he takes it from home. Uh, and so it's a whole different thing, and that ministry is not needed anymore. So uh, anyway, that's how I got to be here and how I got to be involved in uh, the work, and uh, it's been an encouragement to me all these years. 
Yeah, Bob does a lot of things kind of behind the scenes type things as he's doing right now, monitoring this and stuff, but he's been a valuable part of this congregation. A lot of people don't see it. I mean, we as leaders, we see it all the time because he'll take almost any task we give him and he'll run with it and do a fantastic job with it. So um, he's helping to set up this migrator purpose and part of that. So um, definitely appreciate him. But yeah, he's had kind of a long route getting here too. So I think about, I mean, how many years ago did we meet Derek? It's been what? 15 years, maybe? Oh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, just see where you've come in that time since I first knew you. Know. Yeah. You just never know where God's going to lead us and how, you know. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So, um, you know, my own story, I mean, some of you probably know, I mean, if you were here a couple of weeks ago for that um, little uh, thing they did for the elders and stuff, my mother got up and told a story about me when I was five years old. Or about five years old, I went and set a little table for lunch, and I set three places, one for myself, one for my brother, and one for Jesus. That even at a young age, I was already thinking about Jesus in my life, and I grew up going to a Lutheran church and later a Methodist church. And so I had a working knowledge of the Bible, you know, the many, many stories and stuff, but there just always seemed to be something missing. I could never quite figure out what it was, but just something never quite clicked. And in college, it was even worse because I'm really thinking through these things. I'm studying with the Bible, going to different churches. I try, I've tried almost every denomination out there and just seemed like nothing seemed to quite fit. I couldn't put my hand on it, but it just never seemed to click. And when I graduated college, I'm still looking for different churches. And I moved to Ellensburg and the Church of Christ there was running what they called a joy bus. They go around the neighborhood and pick up kids to go to church. And uh, I was staying with my um, uncle and his kids were going on the bus. They say, want to go to church on the bus? I said, sure, why not? So I hop on the bus and go to church and, and the Church of Christ. And I'm listening to the sermon says, that's it. You know, there was, there was something about that message that says, they're looking to see what does the Bible say, not what does Luther say or Wesley or anybody else. What does the Bible say and trying to follow it? And so it really impressed me. And uh, so I kept going there. And at that time, my wife, my current wife was actually on that same bus, so we met on the bus, started going out a few months later. Um, she shared with me the gospel in a little uh, booklet called Something Jesus Wanted Me to Share With You. And I went through that and said, you know, I, I need to be baptized. So we woke the preacher up about 9 or 10 o'clock at night, got him out of bed, and I was baptized in Ellensburg. And I already, like I say, I already had some basic working knowledge, but I was almost like, Chris, I got thrown into doing different things at the congregation in Ellensburg. So I was, you know help on the Lord's table. They actually had me leading singing a couple of times before I left there. I was only there like nine months. Um, and I was, uh, you know, occasionally leading prayer. Um, but then I came over here and moved here to Puyallup. And so I was living in North Puyallup, and there was a, a lady here named Nona Claspel, whose husband had been an elder in this congregation, but passed away fairly soon before I got here. Um, but she took me under her wing and started trying to teach me some different things. Um, and then the, we had a new preacher that came in here, um, Keith Wright, um, and we started doing like home studies like Lindsay's doing. We started doing that kind of home study, and I learned a lot by going to those studies. And then Keith also was trying to train some of us about the basics of preaching, and so I started teaching a little bit. And then Carol and I, we got married, and um, we started teaching, well, I guess it was after our kids were a little bit older, we started teaching our kids, like the elementary school kids. So we're teaching first and second, then third and fourth, and fifth, kind of like Chris. But I just kept on going up to the teens, and I got to adults. And now here I am teaching adults. I've been doing this for, gosh, probably 25 years teaching adults now. Um, so it just, it just kind of a progression um, throughout my life. And early in my career, I remember... Um, a couple of the members here were asking me if I wanted to go to preaching school and become a full-time preacher. And I thought, I don't see myself. I don't think that's where God wants me to be. I don't see myself as a full-time preacher. I see myself eventually, if God willing, being an elder. And this was, you know, I was probably in my 20s at that time. Um, but as I read the Bible and studied what an elder was supposed to do and be like, I thought, I think that's where God wants me. And then when I was in my 40s, this congregation, you know, they came and asked me, we need you an elder. And I said, I don't think I'm ready and old enough. They said, no, we believe you are. And so Holy Spirit must have thought that I was ready to become an elder. So I've been doing that for 20, 23 years now, I think, something like that. Yeah. Um, and like Chris, I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, but it's been a joy doing that. And I continue 
to grow um, through my study and working with people and stuff. But my experiences in this congregation, this congregation prior to my coming here had had a split and there was some difficulties. I don't even know all the details, but it wasn't pleasant. And in my 20 plus, well, now 40 plus years here, um, prior to my becoming ill, there were two other times the congregation split as well. They weren't always pretty, but I, re I learned from those experiences and I hopefully put them to use to help this body to be a stronger, more unified body than it used to be. Um, so it's been, been quite a journey. Um, but uh, see, this is where God wants me to be, so I'm, I'm staying put. So, yeah. But, I mean, between Bob and Paul and Chris and Paul and I, we've probably got, I mean, I've been a Christian for 40-plus years, and I'm probably one of the youngest of those five of us. But, but I think what you're old, too. That's nice. I know. I'm getting old. I know. Yeah. Um, but, but it just, yeah, uh, I am, I'm getting old. I'm not old, but I'm getting there, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I know. Actually, I never felt old until I had to sign up for Social Security or Medicare. Oh, okay. it, Medicare, yeah. Then, it, then it's better. Yeah, yeah. I earned that, yeah. So, yeah, I earned it. So I've got that, yeah. I haven't got Social Security yet, so. Yeah. I'm getting up there, exactly, yeah. So, yeah. We're always getting old. We're never actually old, right? So, yeah. Um, I know that I'm really new to this. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've gone to church with a friend a couple of times. And, and, and it was a very nice church. And but there was something that just... Can grab you. Yeah, and so you know, I, and I knew Lindsay was involved here, and I wanted to come here, and immediately, I knew that there was a difference, mm -hmm. and and I had just went with a friend. They had a harvest night, and it was mm -hmm. enjoyable, and mm -hmm. we enjoyed it, and the church is nice, but it's, it's a, a kind of a gimmicky feel. It doesn't feel heartfelt as much as it does here, and mm -hmm. the people. Mm -hmm. So I know that this is the place that we need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. I'm well, glad to have you here. Yeah. Church one time where the uh, preacher came in on a helicopter, oh. and I knew that, yeah, this this didn't feel right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a show. Yeah, it, it is. And there there are churches out there because I've talked to a number of people, and, and uh, even my kids have gone, you know, business. It, it is. It's more. It's more for show. It's more entertainment, and we're to come here to worship God, right? Um, and I think that's one of the things that impressed me about the Church of Christ is that we. We're not perfect, never claim to be perfect, but our goal is to find out what does God want us to do and to do that best we can. You know? and, and many other churches, they've got some good things. I mean, every single one of those churches I visited, there was something good, but it seemed like there was always something that was missing. You know? <clears throat> so, um, so the Church of Christ, you know, to me, has been the one body that really does the best job overall of trying to find out what God wants to do and do it. Um, but we're all part of that body um, in different parts and different times in our life. We were in different places as well. So like I say, I mean, you never know where you're going to end up. You know, who knows? Maybe you're going to be an elder someday and sitting doing this, you know? Yeah, it'd be great. So. Yeah. Oh, good. good. Yeah. Because that's hard to get away. Yeah. But you yeah. got to get oh, away yeah. a little. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we need the comic relief because I, I don't have much of that <laughs> sense of humor in my, my being as much. Yeah. Um, but I've even heard um, Grayson say that he wants to be an elder someday. You know, which is fantastic. Yeah. You know, yeah. People start off young, um, start thinking about what they want to do. You know, in the body, you never know how God's going to portray you. I mean, as you read through the Bible and you read through some of those different characters, I mean, sometimes, as Bob and Chris pointed out, I mean, your young life, you never would have thought they'd ever do this. And some of the people in the Bible say, "Really, God, you want me to do this?" You know, it's like, well, "Who am I?" You know, I mean, look at people like Gideon. Um, just, I'm nobody, but. God says, I can use you, you know, or Saul, who was persecuting the church, ended up becoming the biggest, you know, evangelist. So, you know, we never know where we'll end up, how God might use us. But we place ourselves in God's hands and take him where he will. It's crazy because it doesn't matter how old you are. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You could be young, you could be old. Yeah. Be yeah. I mean, I, I look at young people like um, uh, Bryant and Zakem, who, who just left here. I mean, he's, what, barely 18. I mean, he's already a better preacher than I probably was at age 40, you know. Um, he's got a lot of knowledge and stuff. Um, and other people don't end up coming to Christ till late in life, but it doesn't matter. We're all part of the same body, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're glad to have every, every person here. <clears throat> Excuse me, okay. So, right. But yeah, I think if you talk to other Christians, you'll find 
similar type stories that everybody's got a story to share how they came to Christ, how they've grown in the church, how God has used them. You know, um, you know, you, you never know just how you'll be used. Yeah. But the point of all this is that God intends to use us, right? We're not just here to just sit in the pew and sing some songs and listen to a sermon. Talking about growing to maturity, um, the Bible actually uses that term a couple times. And we'll get into that. But what does it mean to be mature and how do we get there? I mean, if you think about a baby, right? They start off, they can't do anything from the cell, but you want to raise them to be mature. What do we mean by being mature? Be you ever thought dependent on others as okay. much? Yeah, maybe, maybe not being as dependent upon others, okay. Yeah. I think there's a difference between a physical maturity and like a, a mental or spiritual maturity. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, somebody might be physically mature, but might not be spiritually or mentally mature. I mean, you probably know people we went to high school with and they graduate high school and it's like, they're still little kids, you know, at age 25 and other people at age 22, I mean, they're, they're mature, right? There's a difference, but, but, how, but other than being more kind of independent, how else might you define that, that maturity? Yeah. Think of somebody who has wisdom because they lived through things and have learned. Okay, they've got some wisdom. They've learned through the experiences. They've, they've gathered some um, experience to help them to get through life without maybe needing to depend on other people to use that wisdom in a good way. Okay, I like that. Okay. Yeah, and I look at that too. That idea of maturity is somebody who is able to stand on their own two feet. You know, it doesn't mean we don't need other people, but they know how to make good, and that's part of what wisdom is about: making good choices, good decisions. They can choose right, they can stand on their own two feet, they can function right on their own. They don't need mom and dad to answer all these questions and tell them how to do things and what to wear and whatnot. Um, they've got it figured out, okay? But even raising kids takes time, right? We don't mature overnight. And same thing as a Christian. We, as you just heard all of us talk about, none of us matured overnight. You know, we didn't get to where we're at overnight. It's taken time. Uh, Paul even talks about the fact that he learned to be content. I mean, he, it took time to learn these things, right? So it is a growing process. Um, when we get there, I think the major one for yeah. me is when we had Ava. Okay. I had a, 21 years old, I had to mature real quick. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, because you suddenly had to be responsible for some other human life yeah. that was totally dependent upon you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it does make a big difference. Um, yeah, so you recognize that I've got to take care of. I know in, in raising my own kids, I mean, just kind of a quick story. When I was in college at WSU in the dorm, I'd wash my own clothes and my mom had taught me, but I saw how many people couldn't figure out how to wash clothes properly. So I said, okay, my kids are going to know how to do laundry. They're going to take care of the house. So growing up, I made sure I went through and did the chores. So when they left, they were mature enough they could take care of a house properly, right? And then you were teaching them how to use the washboard. With yeah, the right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, we did use the washboard. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably the last generation of probably that you Probably so. It. Yeah. Yes, kids do with a washboard. What's that? You know, so we were on a logging road yesterday or the day before and talked about a washboard road. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. where it comes from is that, yeah. that kind of a term. Yeah. Um, yeah. But each of us, I mean, we mature at different rates and at different levels, and, and but it's, it's a growth process, right, that we go through. Okay. Um, and, and so it's the same is true in the church then. And I want to look at a couple scriptures. We're not going to get very far today, but that's okay. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4. We looked at Ephesians chapter 2, where Paul had talked about the fact that we are part, being built into a body. But in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, Paul starts by talking about the one body, one hope, one spirit, one faith, and so forth, and talking about Christ, who's the head of all things. And it gets down to verse 11. It says, it was he, meaning Christ, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we'll no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and the craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, 
grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. It's crazy. As we last Bible study we had Petty's, we did this exact chapter. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fantastic chapter, and, and this section in particular. So any thoughts or you want to share from that? Or um, do you remember? Or? Well, it just kind of, uh, from what I remember, it was a couple weeks ago, but it was, it was just kind of showing, like, the unity um, of, you know, we're all not, we're out on our own. And right, that, uh, yeah. You know, we, we each have our, just like you were saying before, our own part, and we all kind of help each other and become one. Mm-hmm. God and stuff, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you use the, uh, the term here a couple times, the body that we've been looking at. We're all part of that same body. And the role he's given some people, apostles, there aren't any apostles around today, and prophets in the term that we often think of prophets, we don't have them. But we do have evangelists, we've got pastors and teachers today. But all of them are to help to prepare God's people to do works of service, right? Those people, the prophets, the teachers, pastors, they don't do all the work. Their job, that's part of my job, is to help prepare you to do works of service, right? Um, whatever it is, right? Because um, we're all part of that same body, and it's to help us to all grow up. And again, it's that idea of unity, we're all part of the same body, you know, and we're meant to be together um, and to serve God as a unit, but help each person become mature in Christ. And it's one of the things about, I mean, as a, as a physical human body, you can watch a child grow up and the child becomes mature, you know, physically. It's not like they're hand never matures, but their feet do, although sometimes parts do, you know, when they're growing up might be out of yeah. place. But eventually they all kind of grow up, but in the church it's like, we're never fully mature because we got older mature people and then we got younger, more immature people. And we're always bringing new people in, right? And even some of our older people, they certainly can't do as much as they used to do. Um, so there's always this idea that we're continually having to try and work to mature. We never can say, we've arrived, we're here, right? We've made it. Um, any church and body that gets to that point, they're, they're on the downhill side, yeah. Um, what Ephes said, uh, Ephesian, that's somebody's Ephesians. name? Yes, that's the name of the city. Oh, okay. uh, Ephesus was the name of the city. Ephesus. And okay. Paul started a church there, worked there for two or three years, and uh, preaching the gospel. And so he wrote this letter to that church after he had left to remind him of some of these things, yeah. So, um, yeah, so a lot of these, you know, most of these New Testament books are written by Paul specifically to try and remind him, encourage him in these things, yeah. So, yeah. And, that, and that's largely why we started this entire class was to help ground people in the Bible and the faith and so forth, to help use a, a good foundation upon which to build your service in Christ. Um, and so we've gotten to this part here, we're talking about okay, the body itself and how we grow. Um, and so, you know, my job, Chris's job, Bob's job, Tommy's job, and we're here to help you to grow, to be able to do service. Um, and that's why we've got this um, uh, seminar coming up next Saturday, right, is to help people to help find, well, what has God gifted me? You know, what can I do best, right? Utilizing maybe your talents and your abilities and your experiences, you know, how can I use those for God? You know, what, what can I do? Even if I don't know that much, there's still things you can do. Um, and so this Saturday, I encourage people to come and to, you know, find out, you know, where, what's God's purpose for me? Um, and I, I'm going to come. I went through it again before, but I'm going to go through it again because you never know. Because each stage of my life, it seems like there's something different I'm learning, you know. So, um, but this, this to me has always been a, uh, a key passage that reminds us of what the body is supposed to be doing. We build each other, each other up in love, you know, and we're, we're striving to work together. Um, and as we, as it talked about, that we'll no longer be infants. I mean, an infant, they'll put everything in their mouth, they'll touch everything. I mean, they, they don't have any concept. We've got to teach them things. And same thing in Christ oftentimes. We don't know a lot of things. When some people, someone says this, is, hey, that sounds good. Somebody else teaches it. Well, that sounds good. But as we continue to study the word, we find out that we can figure out, oh, that's not right. That is right. Um, and that's the idea. We want to be able to teach and to train you so that it doesn't have to be coming from me or Bob. You can sit down and figure out if somebody's trying to tell you if it's truth or not, you know. Um, that we can grow up in Christ and that we all support each other in that work. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's fun. It's a fun journey. 
So one thing real quick is yeah. uh, what I love about Church Christ is, you know, I've been to many other churches before and uh, coming from like even the helicopter guy coming in, he guilted you so bad if you didn't give, mm -hmm. you felt just, you felt so awkward. But what I love about Church of Christ is like, what's, what's your, you know, you have no, um, ulterior motives for right. us. You're here just strictly teach the Bible. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And just like before, I, I never feel pressure to give. I yeah, never I feel pressure. Nothing. No, you don't expect nothing. Just, are you here to help? If yep. you want it, that's great. If yep. not, it's cool too. That's what I love about it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We're, we're here to not guilt people um, into those things, but we, we teach what God says. And uh, yeah. So, you got, you got like Chris pointed out, we got a generous group here. So, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, but glad to have you all here. All right, well, time's up, so let's go ahead and Father in prayer. We'll pick this up next week. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> how grateful we are for your loving kindness in your lives, how you work through each and every person in this room, throughout this world, to see your will done. We pray, Father, you continue to help us to grow. No matter how old we get, we continue to know more, to do more, and to help others to, to know your word, to follow that as well. That together we can grow up in love, we can help one another to mature, to be the body it has to be, to serve one another, and to help the world to see that, in fact, you are alive and well in your body, and that we desire to see all people saved, and that we can use our gifts and talents to that end. We pray for the upcoming workshop that many people attend and can help them to find their purpose, and you'd um, help us to see how you've gifted us to be able to, to serve you in many different ways, and that all things be done according to your will, not our own will, that we might honor you and glorify your name. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.